Good people YouTube, I'm the watch it. I'm not even wearing my watch, what the hell? Good people YouTube, I'm the watch it and today another Seiko that I've been wanting to see ever since it got released and that's the Marine Master 200 or the Marine Master Reduced or the Steel Master, whatever you want to call it and I have to say that it lives up to all the expectations that I had except there's one thing that kind of throws me off and it's a bit weird. And the stakes are higher since my Marine Master 300 is now for sale. More information in the pinned comment and in the description. So yeah, I might be looking at this Marine Master 200 over here as a replacement. So in this video, I'm gonna get into all the details about this awesome watch, the dimensions, how it wears on the wrist, the dial, the handset, the case, all that good stuff and while this isn't a marine master 300 comparison video i will be referencing it throughout the video because they are obviously very directly related also big thanks to exquisite timepieces for sending in this watch for review i'll be really sad to send this one in alongside the shogun uh, which i did a video about so uh yeah let's get into it So as always, let's do the dimensions and here we have a 42 millimeter case technically with a lug to lug of 48.8 millimeters technically and overall thickness of 13 millimeters technically. And I'm saying technically for all these dimensions because like any other Seiko, the numbers on paper don't reflect what it's like to actually wear on the wrist, you know, I guess other than the 20 millimeter lug width. On the wrist, in real life, it wears more like a big 40 millimeter watch or a 41 millimeter watch, and that's because of two factors. First, it's the bezel width, which is 40.4 millimeters, and this is mainly what you see on the wrist, so you don't notice the extra 1.6 millimeters of case on the other side. Well, 0.8 millimeters case on, on either side. Then the second factor is that the case sides are polished so they reflect your skin effectively making the case disappear and making it a non-factor when it comes to the overall visual weight of the watch and the same thing applies to the Marine Master 300. It's technically 44 millimeters but it wears much smaller and actually weirdly enough the Marine Master 300 wears visually at least quite similarly to the 42 millimeter Marine Master 200 which is crazy to think about. So yeah, don't be afraid of the 42 millimeter case width if you are afraid of it. And as for the 48.8 millimeter lug to lug, that's less of an issue just because of the sloping polished surface of the lugs. Uh, so it kind of disappears in the same way that the case size disappear. But obviously the lug to lug measurement can pose more of a harder ceiling for some folks. But on the wrist in general, it's such a comfortable watch that wears so well because the case back and the bottom side of the case slopes outward this way so yet yeah, no hard edges and this is just what Seiko does best so no surprises over here they've made a super comfy watch and because of the sloping underside of the watch it wears deeper into the wrist which makes the watch wear thinner than the 13 millimeter thickness which is already a pretty nice thickness and yeah same thing goes for the Marine Master 300 as well despite it being a solid ingot of steel basically but of course there is no way of getting around the weight which is substantial. So now on to the case and bezel and this is where so much of the watch's appeal is and that appeal is that it's a thinner Marine Master 300 case and that for me is huge because the actual design of the case with the super strong lugs with the flowing curves from the top to the bottom and with the brushed line running top to bottom as well you know it's just an incredible design and actually this is probably one of my absolute favorite case designs of all time and now with the marine master 200 it's in a more wearable package Oh, and one thing to note is that the Marine Master 200 has a regular screw down case back, whereas the Marine Master 300 has that insane monoblock case. So no seams in the back whatsoever. It's very, very cool to see. So yeah, other than that, the Marine Master 200 has the Marine Master 300 case with slightly different proportions, obviously, since it's thinner. But I have to say that there is just simply nothing that can replace the Marine Master 300 experience because the steel monoblock case gives you a sensation of solidity like unlike anything else and the flat crystal with the domed underside looks unlike any other crystal that I've seen as well so yeah it just feels so purposeful and like a, an instrument basically as for the Marine Master 200 it still looks absolutely incredible and you're getting an incredible tool watch that has 90 95% of the Marine Master feel and most importantly it's all in a package that's actually daily wearable which is a huge reason why I want to get this 
basically the Marine Master 300 feel and look, but more wearable and more normal. Oh, and then we have the bezel, which is a steel bezel, which I'm a huge fan of. I love this combination. I modded my SKX to basically look like this, so that's a plus point. And then the bezel grip is a chunky coin edge, but not as chunky as the coin edge grip on the Marine Master 300. But I like both of them very, very much. And the bezel click feel is fantastic. I think it's the closest to the Marine Master 300 bezel feel that I felt on any Seiko. The SP, SPB 143 is really, really good and really, really close as well. But for me, this just edges it ever so slightly. And uh, yeah, let's listen to it. That feels good too. Now on to the dial and the handset, and these two things were much more different than what I was expecting, but in a good way, because when I first wore it, it felt like the hands were a bit different compared to what I was used to, but I thought maybe it's just in my head. But when I saw it next to the SPB 143, all was confirmed. Because as it turns out, Seiko made the hour hand a bit bigger overall, and then the minute hand has a slight taper from the bottom to the top, and all the other SPB divers have the same design. The hour hand is a bit smaller, and the minute hand is not tapered. The indices effectively have the same shape and design as the Marine Master 300, and the 12 o'clock marker is the same sort of split shield that you find on the Captain Willard and the Slim Willard. But here, they tapered the 12, and they very slightly tapered the 6 and 9. And I love that they made this change because it gives the Marine Master 200 a slightly more modern feel compared to the Marine Master 300, and this paired with the slightly tapered hands just makes for such a cohesive design overall. So uh, yeah. Uh, bravo Seiko. And to be honest, I'm amazed that Seiko spent the time and money to give the Marine Master 200 a different handset because Seiko usually uses the same hands for a bunch of watches. And as for the dial itself, there isn't too much to say because it's a matte black dial, but what I will say though is that it's nice and uniform and the printing on the dial is uh, slightly raised so it gives the overall dial a more premium feel, uh, which at this price point is a good thing. So now on to the part that I find a bit off-putting and that's the three o'clock loom pip that was kind of just wedged into the minute and seconds track to comply with the new ISO dive standards. So the weird loom plot is there on my Willard. However, it looks less visible there because of the way that the crystal bevel reflects everything. The loom plot looks stretched like the rest of the minute track. So I never really notice it, weirdly enough. On the Marine Master 200 though, it's more visible because the crystal is flat with a less intense bevel. So the edge distortion doesn't affect the loom plot very much. And I gotta say that it's a bit bothersome since it's not lined up with the rest of the indices. So I'm not sure how I'll feel about that you know, later on, which makes me hesitant to get this, even though some say that they will they just get used to seeing it after a while. And maybe it's kind of like the Cyclops, I just get used to it. So, you know, not sure exactly what to think, but I feel like maybe I'll get used to it, but maybe I won't. So. So since this watch was sent in by exquisite timepieces and since I have to return it, I wasn't able to size the bracelet for my wrist so I can't comment too much about it. But what I will say though is that like much of the rest of the watch, Seiko set aside unique components just for this Marine Master 200. The SPB 143 and the Willard use the same rounded three link bracelet, which is a solid bracelet, which works, I think, better on the Willard because of the bigger case proportions. But my main issue with those bracelets was that it just weighs way too much because it's just way more chunky than it really needed to be. But here on the Marine Master 200, it's got a different variation of that bracelet because overall it's slightly thinner. And in addition to the rounded outer links, it's got a flat center link with a polished bevel, which looks pretty great. And it complements the polished surfaces of the case so well. And since the watch head itself is bigger than the SPB 143, I know that this bracelet is gonna work very, very well with the proportions of the Marine Master 200. And since I know that's gonna work really, really well, and it looks really, really good, I want to, it just makes me want to buy this watch even more so. So yeah, lots of thoughts still going on <laughs> in my head. And I guess just for funsies, I'll mention that it's got the useless in real life dive extension clasp that sits weirdly on the wrist. And I've talked about this stupid clasp before, but to me, it's not really an issue because I swap out this clasp all the time anyway. So uh, yeah, pro problem solved, kind of. 
So yeah, there you have it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the Marine Master 200. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos. And until the next video, good day.